it, like my husband, six foot three, 200 pounds has always stayed sometimes a little bit more, a little bit. And it just, he just doesn't care. He doesn't care about food. It's not a thing. Does he not have food noise? And how did he get out of it? Why do I have that? <laughs> so it's very much the case of why do some people have blonde hair and why do some oh, people okay. have Genetics you know, brown hair? Hundred percent. So really? some people are going to have like a either a disruption in that regulation pathway that's leading up to that primal brain, and the way I kind of describe it is like you know some people they lose a pound of fat and the body goes on red alert. It's like ah, DEFCON five, like yes. the world is ending. We need to do something about it. Whereas other people they lose 10, 20 pounds and then the brain's like, oh yeah, we should we should probably stop that from happening. That that would be yeah, you know what? Maybe go find some some cake or something like that, you know. So genetics are going to play a huge role in how how potent some of that signaling and that sort of thing comes out of there and how prevalent it's going to be for some people and and not for others. And there is a large component as well in terms of the environment. So when we look at the environment, there's not only the learned behaviors that you will pick up in childhood and that sort of thing, such as if, you know, food was always used as a reward, or if, you know, when mom and dad fought, you got a treat or something like that, you would start to associate when I'm stressed, when I'm anxious, when I'm feeling this feeling, your brain has made the association that, hey, cookie or ice cream makes me feel a little bit better. And so it'll have that association, that pathway that it'll go to. There is also a large area that's starting to come out around epigenetics, which is, so genetics, what we're looking at is like the core genetic code that you were born with and that makes you, you. Epigenetics is kind of the process of the environment, including when you were in the womb, um, where you live, you in Kentucky versus me here in, in Canada that's going to switch different genes on and off that are also going to play a role in terms of yeah how how big your cravings are and what foods you do crave so it's all this complex interactions on various things that are going to affect the process and such like that and things that you ruminate on the things that you think about and ultimately how much food noise you have and don't have 